names of Transvision, or goes by the name, of Transvision Vamp. And much of that band's success is down to the looks and the attitude of its lead singer. Please welcome the face of Transvision Vamp, Wendy James. <laughs> So what do, you, what do you think of that fella then, getting in the bottle? Astonishing. It's astonishing, isn't it? Yes, it is. You should change them to the astonishing Zamorati, really, yeah. shouldn't you? Well, let's, let, recently I've been reading a lot about you in the papers, and there's been a lot of nonsense, I assume nonsense, written about you, but I thought I'd give you the chance to clear it up, so I'll run through a yeah, few... I'd like to clear my name. There you go. A few recent press stories. Mm. Seriously. OK. Did you slag off Kylie? No. OK. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Occasion, on that particular oh, no, okay. occasion, it was all right. Have you been banned from your local pub? Yes, but I got them back. I got them oh, back. I had the okay. last word on that. Are you going out with Nick Cayman? No. Okay. <laughs> Where did we get you today? <laughs> Are you going out with Jason Donovan? No. <laughs> Are you going out with Michael Fish? <coughs> yes. Yeah, you are. Yes, I am. But not the Michael Fish, the weatherman, I think. No, he's a really tasty raster in Leverett Grove, actually. Well, it sounds good to me. Now, let me... Do you think the press, when they write stuff about you, does that, does that bother you, or do you just sort of, like, ignore it? Well, I'm used to them writing extreme stories about me, which is OK, because, you know, everybody has to grab a headline and sell the copies each day, but if they actually start lying, then... I do get annoyed because they can't make their money out of lying about me. It's all right if they, you know, they fabricate little stories, but actually a plain lie, which was the Kylie Minogue thing. You know, nothing happened that day. Nana was there. Nothing happened that day. Nana and who? Cherry. Oh, I thought you meant Nana Muscoey. What are you doing this phone drive? Hanging out with Nana Muscoey. <laughs> So, no, so I got angry that day, but in general, no, you just, you know, yeah. I don't even read the, read the papers. But do, do you think it has much influence? Because a lot of people, obviously, they don't know you, they're not going to see you, you don't do that much TV, and they're going to, well, not talking anyway, I mean, you're on doing music. So that's probably where they get the information from, f about you. Mm. Well, I just don't listen to anything that they're saying, and it really, you know, once you get to a certain stage, when you're playing live, especially when you're a live band and you can go out and see people for real, then you really can affirm whether you're doing OK or whether you're not. Whereas if you just have a pop career that relies on the, on the press, then maybe they have more influence over you. But if you're playing live, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, we've proved that. The NME said this year that it, our album was the worst album of the year and it went straight in at number one, which I'm not bragging about, but it kind of proves that they have a little influence when you get to a Very little stage. influence indeed, in fact. There you go. Bless them. Well, now, you have to earn their money, right? Well, they do. Well, we all have to earn the cross, don't we? Yeah, that's right. You have to earn the cross, don't you? Don't you have to do a bit of work now? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying you're not a natural blonde. That's right, isn't it, Wendy? <laughs> how can you tell? I've just had my roots done. But, well, well, how often do you dye your hair, then? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Jonathan, let's move on to the next <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the next question. But have you seen... You, you, are you obsessed with this sort of blonde thing? Because there's obviously a lot of people we... A kind of I'm icon <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm interested. Um, <laughs> I mean, I read somewhere that someone had written about you that you were the 90s Debbie Harry and that you'd carried that cutting around with you for a while, that you were really flattered by that. I did keep that particular cutting. But it's so easy for journalists. You know, when you first start, they just compare you back to what's gone before. So obviously, I was singing in a kind of rock and roll band, back with boys in leather jackets, and I had blonde hair. So they said, oh, it's the new blondie. And it really isn't the new blondie at all. And the blonde thing, sure, you know, I'm a fan of Bardo and Monroe and all of these girls, but um, also Marlena and Marlena Dietrich, and all, you know, it really doesn't matter the colour of the hair. So I'm not an obsessed woman about blonde, being blonde. It's just, in fact, the reason I went blonde in the first... I remember it was the morning of my English O-level, and uh, we decided to go away at lunchtime and cut all of our hair off. So I had really long brown hair, and I cut it all off, and I dyed it orange, and the only way I could get out of being orange was to be blonde and that's... Did you, uh, did you pass your exam? That's right. Yes, I did. Great day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, for something you didn't want to talk about, you did very well then, I was <laughs> Well, look, I mean, do you think it's... I was just asking you, it's obviously a remarkably trivial question about the colour of your hair there. Do you think that women in pop get more of that stuff levelled at them than guys? I mean, do you think, uh, for example, men find it easier to be, like, sexy in a pop band than women? I don't know if they necessarily get asked more trivial questions. It's just that when they are asked those questions, they're highlighted more because the, the, the media is still run by men. In fact, it's, it's still, you know, even though legally we still ha we, women now have equal rights apart from becoming the Pope or whatever, mm. I still don't believe it's an equal society. And certainly women in pop 
do get a harder time, but then I think at the end of the day, it's down to the individual to make the most of what they have. And you could really, there are so many women saying, oh, I have a really hard time because I'm a female in pop music, and that's bullshit as well. Because, you know, if you're good at something, then you're good at something, and it really doesn't matter what sex you are. You wouldn't really want to be the Pope, though, would you? <laughs> I wouldn't mind his money, actually. It's very okay, now, let me ask you something. This is still, I mean, it's kind of, I probably, I don't know, I would be asking the guy if this happened. I'd ask Prince the same question if this had been the papers. Pentos, apparent, Penthouse apparently offered you £250,000 to pose nude. Is that, is that the case? Yes, that's true. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Were you, were you tempted at all? No, not at all. Why not? Um, for various reasons. A, I don't particularly appreciate the way Penthouse photographs women. You I mean do with no clothes on, no? No, that, no, I appreciate, definitely I appreciate the female body, you know. I went to the Helmut Newton exhibition and it's wonderful to look at those women. The female form is a very beautiful thing. And well, I think it I, should, you and, know. <laughs> and it should be appreciated and it has been for many years, for centuries. But, you know, there's a difference between art, without wanting to sound pretentious, and cheap thrills and tits on page three which is basically penthouse is the higher class page three and i don't like that well it's not that much higher class probably is it really not really no but no, uh, but, but do you not think of people i know people have leveled this accusation at you and i'm just interested in your answer do you not think that you're using yourself to sell the music in the same way that say um breasts for want of a shorter word sell magazines <laughs> like, uh, like penthouse um no i don't because at the end of the day you, of course, all, of, all bands should look attractive, whether you're Billy Bragg, Michelle Shocked, or Prince, or Mick Jagger, or Wendy James. We all look attractive yeah. to our particular audience. But you don't sell millions of albums because you look good. That's the simple truth, you know. You could do a whole bunch of business on posters, but you don't make a lot of money on records if, it, if people just like the way you look. And we've been around long enough, I think, for me to justify myself saying that it's because of the music. But of course I'm attractive to my audience. Anybody would be. I should, Coco. Well, Wendy, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thanks for coming in. And uh, you. see you for a drink afterwards. Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, the effervescent Wendy James. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, <laughs> Get down there. Oh, my word. Oh, good Lord. Oh, well.